Yep. And we know how that worked out. Or how it panned out. Rather. To my surprise, we really did finish. Tomi-san and Adiyo-san left a little before noon. Tomi-san to prepare lunch for the track team and Adiyo-san to supervise the remedial classes. And they came back in the afternoon, both of them handling their resp responsibilities and still completing their work here too. They finished at around 5pm. Adiyo-san went home and Tomi-san went to prepare dinner for the track team. Before they left, they came to see us while we were finishing our work. It's been a long time since I felt like I was doing overtime like this. The two of them had their own jobs to attend to, of course, so they couldn't do as much work as we did. Somehow, Kiri and I managed to fill out the last form before it got too late. Ha! I'm sighing without even realizing it now. Ah, oh, this might be kind of bad. The breath I just let out felt a little warmer than usual, and is it just me or is my body feeling a little heavy too? I have to concentrate now. If I relax, I might. So you could chat and I brought dinner. Thanks. Though it's just on onigiri and miso soup. That's fine. I'm sorry you had to make it. Don't apologize. We decided we'd make turns, right? I'm sorry we have to have crappy food every day since I've never really cooked. But you can cook, huh, so chan You'll figure it out when you live alone, kitty. You'll really have nothing to eat if you don't cook for yourself. Kinda, yeah. You don't ever go, just go to a convenience store or eat out. I do that when I'm too busy or tired, but you'll stop cooking if you get used to that. And it'll get expensive, you know? I guess so. I think Kitty will get will get it when she moves out from her parents, but it's really nice to just have food waiting for you like that. To have someone make it for you, that's why. I'm really happy to have Kitty's onigiri and miso soup, though I think she should she should practice cooking a little more. Wait, Suyuka chan. Hm, what is it? I suddenly realized Kitty was staring straight at my face, and she's so pretty, it made my heart skip a beat. And then my heart started pounding even harder when with Kitty's next action. Excuse me for a sec. Oh, uh, what? She suddenly reached out and touched my forehead, so I kind of made a weird noise in surprise. Kitty's hand on my forehead was pleasantly co cool, which made me realize exactly what kind of state I was in. You have a bit of a fever, just like I thought, Suyuka chan. Ah, could you tell? I guess so. I guess I do. I knew it, you were working too hard after all, Tsuyuka-chan. I only... I just... I only just thought maybe I had a fever, like, a little while ago. That's why I said you shouldn't work to work so hard. Well, Tomi-san and Adiyo san were helping so much, there was no way I could slack off by, by myself. And you were helping so much too, Kitty. But, like... And I only realized just now, how come you could tell? Of course I can, cuz... I'm looking out for you, Tsuyuka-chan, since I love you. Uh. <laughs> These words aren't fair. Oh, I think my fever is rising. I'm not sure if I'm really showing it or not. All I can really do is help you out with your work, after all. That's not true. It shows when you... When you can tell me how I'm feeling, doesn't it? I think so. I do. I wonder how you show your love for someone. I don't really know, actually, since I've been so far from love for so long. I was kind of avoiding all that until I started figure uh, until I started going out with Kitty. I was looking away from from it all. But putting your hand on someone's forehead to check for a fever is one of those things, isn't it? It made my heart beat really fast anyway. Anyway, you should get some sleep after you eat, okay, Tsuyuka-chan? Yeah, well, we finally have have time have some time to rest after all. That's right. Yeah. <sighs> and by the time I'd finished my onigiri and miso soup dinner. I could already barely stand from a fever. Kiri didn't need to say any other word to me about going to bed. I readily wrapped myself into my futon and fell soundly asleep. In the freaking math club room. Well, I guess that kind of works, right? Can't really sleep in the dorms with the other ones, I guess. But I had sleeping in the same room? Probably not. Probably not. Summer Camp Task Force H quarter... Blah, four. By the way. <laughs> oh yeah, that's when... That's when she checks on the fever, yeah. Ah. My sigh sounded even louder as it echoed through the empty room. In the end, I still got a fever. I ended up just like Kiri was worrying last night. I've been all... I've always been like this. It's not that I'm unhealthy or anything like that, but I tend to get a temperature when I work too hard or get too glum. And then I end up bedridden like this. Even though the fever is not that bad, I can... I still can't concentrate. 
There are never any problems when I get physical. I don't know what to call it except having a weak constitution. I hate being like this. Another sigh. This is kind of a habit of mine too. When I woke up this morning, I could already feel the words spinning around me. Kitty forced me back into my futon right away. I guess my face was bright red. She put her hand on my forehead and diagnosed a fever. Her hand felt pleasant and cool. She told me she'd take me to the nurse's office, but I turned her down. The nurse is there, after all, and <clears throat> if she found out I had a fever, she'd have to call in another teacher. Then someone who's supposed to be on vacation would have to come in. I don't mean to be stubborn or anything, but I just feel too bad about that. I'm just a little dizzy. If I try, I can, I can do my job just fine. And there's no work I have to do today anyway, since Tumi and Nadia san organized everything yesterday. I feel a little pathetic having my students take charge like that, but since it, end I en since it ended up this way, I appreciate what they did. I wouldn't have gotten any rest <clears throat> if I if I'd had this fever and still had more work to do. I should just consider myself lucky, not that I'm lucky to be confined to bed, but uh, I've got a ways to go yet, haven't I? I'm nowhere near the kind of teacher I hope to be. I wanted to have s some... Uh, I wanted to have students relying on me to be able to do all sorts of work to make school a fun place for everyone to be, to be that kind of teacher. I'm not like that at all, and now I'm even dating one of my students, and we're both women too. How did this happen? It's like Kiri confessed to me, and suddenly I just couldn't couldn't turn her down. But it's her fault for getting so pretty afterward. Not that I blame you or anything. I'm sorry, Kiri. Sorry, I'm sorry, Kiri. I love her. I really do. Ah, but she's a student. Ah, this fever is making me think about weird stuff. I muttered to myself, staring up at the ceiling. I hope Kitty comes back soon. She told me to rest or my fever wouldn't go down, and she's probably right, so I've been resting like I should be. But I must have really fallen asleep at some point, and when I woke up, Kitty was gone. There was a note by my pillow saying she went to buy something to drink. Did she go all the way to the convenience store? I don't even know when, when she left. Kitty finally has a chance to rest now too, and instead she's looking after me like this. And I'm feeling lonely just because she's le she's left for a little bit. I'm so selfish. Uh, my thoughts are just getting worse and worse. What time is it now? Where did I put my phone? I'm back. Oh, Kitty. The door opened and Kitty stepped back in. I was so relieved when I saw her face. I was a little surprised and my loneliness flew somewhere far away. Ah, you're awake. Sorry, I was shopping a little. It's fine. I should be the one apologizing for the trouble. Nah, you don't need to do that. You were working too hard, so you could shine. You should really just rest today. Yeah. Here, I brought you some Pukadi. Have some if you're thirsty. Yeah, thanks. That's right, you're hungry, so you could shine. Think you can eat something? Oh, oh yeah, I'm a little hungry. Okay, just wait a minute, then I'll bring you something. Ah, wait, I can't let you do that. Do all that. Hush, so you could shine. Just be a good patient and don't worry about it. Ah, where's my phone? Kitty slipped her phone out of her pocket and started dialing someone. Oh, Tomi-chan, Suka-chan's awake. Oh, is it ready? Okay, I'll come get it then. Ah, Tomi-san. Ah, yeah, I ran into her while I was leaving. When I told her how you were doing, she said she'd make you something. I see, ah. Uh, I'm even bothering Tomi-san now. Uh, it's kind of late for that. I mean, Tomi-chan's been helping us this whole week. That's true. There's no point getting depressed about it, Suka-chan. Anyway, I'll get you something to eat, okay? Yeah, thanks. Mm. Tommy san to the rescue. <laughs> I wanted to blow on it and feed it to you. Say, ah. Uh. Kitty, I'm not a little kid and I'm not sick. I can eat rice porridge on my own. <laughs> but I still wanted to do it. Feeding a little kid rice porridge is like the ultimate fantasy, isn't it? Red and blue lights. Okay, we're still clear. <laughs> I'm telling you I'm not a kid. This part of Kitty is, I bet if I were an average height and more mature in appearance, I wouldn't have even registered in her eyes. When I think about that, I wonder if I'm grateful that I was born looking like this. That was good. I'll have to thank Tomi-san later. Yeah, me too. She made me some onigiri too. It's like Tomi-san treated us to the perfect lunch. I knew she was here as the cook for the track team because she's good at it, but that rice porridge was really good, so, so good that it made the stuff I make at home seem like gruel in comparison. If I had 
a bit of egg and salt, or was it stuck? I don't know, but there was just the perfect touch of extra flavor. I set down the little single serving pot by my pillow and lay in my futon again. Or to be more precise, I wasn't allowed out of my futon by Kiri until dinner so that my fever would go down. Hey Kiri. Yeah, Tsuyuka-chan. I promise I'll stay in bed so you can go have fun if you want. What? No way, I'm gonna nurse you, Tsuyuka-chan. Geez, thank you, but you really can leave if you want to. I don't want to, I want to stay with you. Ah, jeez, I'm so happy. I know I'm causing her trouble, but I can't help but think that. Is there anything you want me to do? How about a sponge bath? <laughs> I'm good, mm, but... Could you hold my hand? Just this one. Yeah. Ah, there we go. I stuck out a hand from under the thin covers. Kitty grasped it with both of hers. I can't believe I'm asking one of my students to do this at school. Is it because of the fever too? Uh, just one is fine. You should read or something if you're going to stay here. Kitty held my hand in hers. She shook her head at my words. No, this is good. No amusement beats watching over you, Tsuyuka-chan. Sheesh. Kitty's hands gently... Yeah. Kitty's hands gently held mine. The air conditioning was off, but a pleasant breeze came, came in through the window. The afternoon sunlight filtered through the curtains. I could hear the cicadas outside and... Hey, Tsuyuka-chan. Kitty's voice. Yeah. About the school festival. Hmm. We won't do an exhibit less this year. Huh? You don't want to, but no one will, an will know about the math club if you don't show it off at the school festival. Yeah, no, but at this rate, we might not get any new members. Yeah, but you remember what happened last year, right? Ah, last year's school festival, Kitty, the first year, the sole member of the math club, she did apply for an exhibit space, but being a first year, Ki Kitty had no idea what to do and I was preoccupied with my work for the festival planning committee. In the end, she never got anything prepared, even at the last minute, and we had to leave the exhibit space empty. And to make things worse, I got another fever the first day of the festival. You'll be on the planning committee for the festival again this year, right, Tsuyuka-chan? I bet you'll be really busy as soon as it breaks over. Yeah. And I'm still the only person in the math club, so I think I'd make... It'll make things a lot easier if we didn't ex didn't have to prepare an exhibit or anything. What would you even do? <laughs> That's the math club. Like, I get the music club, obviously. I get the poetry club, obviously. Uh, but what do you do with the math club? I have no idea, actually. <laughs> Brag, maybe? It's about everything I can come up with. But it's fine. It's better not to do anything than to freak out about it and come up with something bad. And this way I can help you again. You don't need to, no, you don't need to worry about me so much. I've already decided that this as, as, as the president. I see. I'm sorry for deciding on my own. That's fine. Uh, you really are pretty, pretty responsible, aren't you, kitty? You think so? Yeah, you're nothing like me. That's not true. You're a, you're a little, but you're a good teacher, so you could try. <laughs> what does the other have to do with it? You don't need to mention my size. <laughs> That's not what I meant. I meant when I was your age. When you were in school. Yeah. Were you even little? <laughs> littler? <laughs> Alright, you, were you even littler than you are now? <laughs> my height hasn't changed much. That's not it. One of my female friends confessed to me when I was in school. Huh. I could feel Kitty squeezing my hand gently. Yeah, I figured she'd, she'd be surprised and curious. I'm Kitty's girlfriend after all. I'm older than her and this is about my past. Why did I say that to her? I'm not even sure myself. Yet, I want Kitty to hear this. It's gonna be interesting now. When she confessed to me, I didn't really understand it. She told me she wanted an answer and I anguished over it. Mm-hmm. Enough to get me bedridden with a fever. And then, when I thought maybe I should accept, I was going to give her an answer. Mm -hmm. She started speaking before I could, and she said, It was just a misunderstanding that I should forget about it, and I ended up in bed again. Boah, that, that's terrible. Mm. I don't think it, I don't think it was that bad, that bad really. She really might have just mis misunderstood her feelings a little. What? But... Mm. But it was a real shock for me. I started thinking that maybe that's just how it goes. So that's why you said when I that's why you said that when I confessed to you. Yeah, I said something just as terrible to you, Kitty. Yeah. 
That's a truth, Suyuka-chan. It's only because you said that I really thought seriously about my feelings for you. Really. Yeah, it was cause it was cause uh, I thought so seriously about seriously about them, Suyuka-chan. Then I realized I really love you. I see. You really are amazing, Kitty. I was training this whole thing behind me until you confessed to me again. I thought I didn't know what it meant to love someone. Hey, Tsuka-chan, did you really love that girl who confessed to you? I don't know. I thought I could say yes to her, but I don't know how for sure when I think back to it now. But back then, I thought about it a lot, though. I see. Do you know now? You said you love me, right? I think I know. I love you, Kiri. I'm wor I worried about it a lot, but I'm still worrying about it, but... Uh, what are you worrying about? Well, I'm a teacher and you're a, you're a student, Kiri. We're a teacher and student at the same school, and we're both women. The last one doesn't matter. I worry about whether or not this is okay. But I love you, Tsuyuka-chan. Yeah, I know. I've heard you. I love you too, Kiri. Yeah. Eh, it's fine. The conversation drew drew to a close, and I shut my eyes, leaving myself to the fever remaining in my head. I felt the warmth of Kiri Kiri's hand grasping mine. It was summer, and the day was hot, but it wasn't unpleasant. The breeze from the window and the voices of the cicadas, the room with Kitty and me. When I lay down and closed my eyes, I saw... I sort of saw Kitty and me back on that day. The day after I'd, con I'd been confessed to, the day that day when I was shocked by my friend's words. I wonder what would have happened back then if I'd had the courage that Kitty has now. I don't know. What if I'd... What if I'd given her an answer right when she'd confessed? What if I'd been shocked? by her words, but been able to process them then. I don't know. Would I have been able to respond to Kitty's first confession probably? I don't know. Ah, there we go. Alright. Oh, she's dozing off too. I didn't want her... I didn't want to get her attention or anything, I just wanted to say her name. Yeah, okay, she's sleeping. <laughs> Kitty didn't answer. All I heard from her was faint breathing. I might have been sleeping a little too after our conversation ended and I closed my eyes. I said her name one more time. Kitty's name as she sat next to my futon, sleeping, still holding my hand. I don't know what was wrong with me back then, but if all that had ha hadn't happened, I might not have met you. When I think that, I feel like it might have been worth those days. I was stuck in bed twice or something. That's so fucking wholesome, man. Even though I'm a teacher, even though you're a student, even though we're both women, who the fuck cares about the last part? This relationship isn't a mistake. It's not a misunderstanding. Our hands holding each other are real. I can't be, be confident even though I'm so unreliable. I can think even if I'm worried. I can back up and when I'm do down like this and not stressed out about it, as soon as my fever breaks... Pretty sure. I squeezed my hand inside Kitty's, our fingers gently entwined. Okay. This game is way too cute, Jesus Christ. Even though you know those red and light, red and blue lights, they might come at some point and I'm kind of freaked out about it still, but these two are just freaking cute. You can tell me anything you want, it's freaking, it's freaking adorable. And uh, with that, by the way, I think we draw a line in the sand, at least for the session today, because we got through a lot, actually, today. We ended up with um, good old Sachi. Sachi, who also now can taste things, just like Megumi, by possessing Yuna, it seems. And apparently they both can also touch and, you know, drag her a little bit, so that's interesting. I wonder why. Because, you know, Megumi could, was able to do that also in July. Yes. 
yeah, in July that, all, that 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 thing started right here. You know, she said like it, maybe it's because of that one time when the spirits go back home. Uh, that's what Sachi san said at least. But you know, that isn't that that was that, that is in late August, and that was in the beginning. I think it was in the beginning of July. So that's not the case. But we're slowly, as you can see, we proceed right here. We are more than halfway through with the game already. And, you know, we can kind of tell because we had this little scene right here, which was just freaking beautifully worded. And this little lovely scene right here, you know, it gets more cute and more endearing. And I can't freaking... It's <sighs> just too good. Know I mean? But, of course, the real stuff is coming next time. Next time we get some comedy relief with Koba, Yuka and Aryu. These two also, they also had, um, <laughs> basically Koba already spoiled, like, the the big thing that she's gonna confess to her at the at the festival, and Adiosan san was cool with it, so we're gonna see. Maybe maybe they're also interchanged a little bit, because, you know, at the beginning right here, we had um, the whole thing from the perspective of uh, Tsurugimine, and then later on, it changed to Sono, and with the last one, we had, oh yeah, with the last one, we had Sono, but it also then switched, no, it was the whole time Sono, never mind. I was say it's also switched to Tsurugimine, but it was, but it was always, also always from the POV of Sono. So maybe we also get that, because I want to see, I want, I want, to, I want to see what is inside Arius' head when she says she's going to look forward to it, because that's going to be interesting to see. And if there's actually some physical stuff going on, even though I kind of doubt it, probably not. Probably not. Maybe? We're going to have to see. We're gonna have to wait and see. And then, of course, we have our first, uh, po possibly, because, you know, this one was not a real sex scene. It was just a tease, basically. So with these two right here, with Sasa and Ichikawa, we're gonna, we're gonna get our first scene. And if it is as beautiful worded as the one between the two track team members, this one, between Matsuri and Miu, then this one is definitely gonna be a shining summer. I'm gonna, gonna look forward for that. So... Uh, yeah, that was it for this session of Kindred Spirits on the Dog on the Roof. I hope you enjoyed the session, and uh, I hope you look forward to next Friday. Obviously, when it is time again for Kindred Spirits on the Roof, when we get into the nitty-gritty, and obviously also into our first real session. So, next time, some comedy relief and some real sweet cuteness between Sasa and Ichikawa. It's gonna be real good. So, look forward for that, and I see you all in the next session of Kindred Spirits on the s roof. There you go.